Bishop Paprocki, it's evident, as you've said, St. Francis of Sales, an amazing uh, and effective preacher and homilist for sure, but also a priest deeply devoted to helping souls love God like he did, um, helping suffering souls finding solace. What other saints would you put in this category of saints who effectively used apologetics, not just to convert souls to be Catholics, but to win souls with love and zeal for the church? Well, I would um, say one of the saints I, I mentioned previously was St. Jose Maria Escriva, uh, a priest from Spain, a very difficult time uh, in Spain in the early 20th century when the church was being persecuted. And yet he was able to start with just a, a very small group of people and, and start uh, this movement of the sanctification of work and looking, looking at our everyday lives. Uh, we, we all uh, have work to do, whether that's paid work or volunteer work or or uh, work in a home. But it's how do we look at that work and the things that we do in everyday life uh, to, to sanctify our lives? So it's not just mm -hmm. doing tasks in order to get a paycheck or uh, just doing things because we have to do them, but doing things, looking at, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm going to try to use the, my gifts to the best of my abilities, because uh, in doing so, I'm showing love for the person that I'm serving. So mm -hmm. even if it's somebody that's, um, you know, a cleaning person, well, you're cleaning somebody's house and their bathroom, you're, you, you have that person in mind that you're trying to make this as beautiful as you can uh, for that person. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. Another way is, is simply to say, well, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for God. I want to give honor to God by, by God has given me certain talents and abilities. I don't want to squander them. I don't want to waste them. So I will use them the best I can. So I, I think St. Jose Maria has given a great example of uh, how to do that. Another saint, probably the most influential saint uh, in my lifetime in many ways would, would be uh, Pope St. John Paul II. Uh, I'm Polish American by my ancestry. Mm -hmm. Uh, I grew up in Chicago. I was ordained in 1978, the year of three popes, the year that he was elected pope. In fact, I remember very clearly uh, where I was when I found out about that. Uh, I was in law school and I was waiting for the elevator. And one of my classmates came to me and he said, uh, did you hear the news? Uh, they've elected a new pope. This is October of 1978. And I said, uh, no, I hadn't heard that. I said, uh, who is he? He said, well, he's, he's Polish. And I honestly said, what's all right, what's the punchline? <laughs> I, I thought, you know, I thought he was going to tell me a Polish joke, frankly. And uh, it wasn't a joke. It was that we had a Polish pope. And what an incredible pope uh, he was. The volume of writings uh, that he has, the numbers of encyclicals, apostolic letters, apostolic exhortations. Uh, I mean, you could, you could just spend years reading through that. And then most significantly, I think, um, well, from my point of view, I'm also trained as a canon lawyer. So he promulgated the 1983 code of canon law, which is still in effect uh, with some amendments. But basically, it's it's the code he promulgated that I'm working with almost every day. And then also the catechism of the Catholic Church. There were people who said it couldn't be done. A, a catechism like that hadn't been written since after the Council of Trent. And uh, people were saying the current climate, we couldn't do that. Well, he pulled it off uh, and, and promulgated in the 1990s. Uh, the, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is a wonderful compendium of, of the church's teaching. So if you want, want to know what does the Catholic Church teach, go, go right to that catechism. And then a third saint I would, would uh, mention is so influential would be his successor, uh, the late uh, Pope Benedict XVI, who, uh, who just died, as we know, last week. Uh, but uh, he was uh, very close to John Paul II, and then collaborator. So he was uh, the prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith under St. John Paul II. And uh, the difference between them uh, was that John Paul II was more of a philosopher. And while his writings are very profound, uh, they can also be a little difficult to navigate. What I found with Pope Benedict was he was much uh, more um, approachable in that sense, that uh, mm -hmm. people could read uh, him and, and, and get a very clear idea of what he was say saying theologically. So I think he also... Uh, had a very uh, profound impact. And so their writings, uh, may they rest in peace, but their writings will still have, a, I think, a very profound influence uh, on the church and on people for many, many years to come.